Picture hats, boaters, visors, and pillboxes. Have you ever wondered about all the different hat styles and where they come from? Let's take a look at the stunning array of hat variations in the Barbie film and find out more about hats along the way. Hello and welcome to a millinery commentary video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I will be identifying hat styles and looking at their origins and cultural significance through the lens of the Barbie movie. I'll also give you some helpful styling tips along the way. So put on a fabulous hat, throw on that pink gingham dress and let's get started. Let's start with the now iconic gingham look from the trailer. This is known as Barbie's perfect day outfit. A sewn hat wouldn't be my usual go-to casual style, but this one is so stunning, it's making me rethink my whole perspective. The perfect day look features a play suit with a skirt in a larger check gingham fabric. Barbie pairs it with a shell necklace and a glamorous sewn picture hat. I have made this replica that I am wearing and you can make it too. Be sure to subscribe to not miss that video coming next week. A picture hat is a hat style with a large brim that frames your face. Originally this style was called a Gainsborough hat for its appearance in the artist's paintings. It later became known as the picture hat both for the reason that it frames the wearer's face like a picture but also because after seeing such a hat painted by Gainsborough on the famous Georgiana Duchess of Devonshire, ladies would go to their milliners and ask for the picture hat. Sailor styles seem to be the most worn by Barbie in the movie. And this doesn't surprise me, they are super easy to wear and versatile. Sailor styles have many names for their various incarnations, including boaters, canotiers and cartwheels. If you see a hat with a flat top, straight sides and a flat brim, it can probably be classed as a sailor. 1940s Hollywood milliner Helen Garnell based her whole book, It's Fun to Make a Hat, around the principle of every hat starting life as a sailor, but then modifying that simple base shape to create a myriad of other styles. For example, flip the brim up and make a padre, tricorn or bicorn, slice into the brim and make a cloche, or my personal favourite, take the brim off completely and make a pillbox. I suspect the hats in the film were probably made by milliners Maison Michel in Paris. Maison Michel are affiliated with the timeless fashion house Chanel and Chanel made the lovely tweed jackets that we see in the film. After all, Margot Robbie is a Chanel brand ambassador. In fact, one of the costumes was an actual archival runway piece originally worn by model Claudia Schiffer for spring 1995. Margot said in an interview that she found Claudia's name on the label inside the jacket. Notice how this seems to be the only sailor style hat that isn't made out of the exact same fabric as the suit. As well as sailors made to match the Chanel suits, my favourite costume from the home film was this jacket. Puffy midi skirt and mandarin collar top complete with a sailor in the matching fabric. I wouldn't have thought that such a shape would work so well with a puffy short skirt, but it does. And this is a reminder to me to always be open to new and unexpected hat and outfit pairings. Margot Robbie also wore a sailor when promoting the film in Seoul as part of her day to night Barbie outfit. However, her Machino strawberry outfit in Sydney was missing the matching cartwheel hat as can be seen in the original runway show from spring summer 2019 ready to wear. Breton Sailor Army and Fatigue Caps are all names for this casual style as worn by Barbie and Ken on their boat. I'm not an army uniform expert so I can't tell you if there are technical military differences between all these names. However, in my opinion, from a civilian fashion perspective, these names seem to be interchangeable. 
This style of hat is characterized by a short peak and a cap consisting of a sewn tip and sideband construction. Here are some fabulous illustrations from The Hat Book by Alan Coldridge for a winter variation with ear flaps. You can clearly see the construction lines in these sketches. These caps are currently weaving their way back into the public consciousness with the return of 90s fashion trends as can be seen on superstar model Bella Hadid. However, lots of fashion editors are calling these caps newsboys and baker boys, which they absolutely are not. Newsboys and baker boys have a sectional sewn crown, much like we saw in the Perfect Day gingham hat. Volume has been added to make them puffy and more like a sectional beret with an added peak. Now, if you were looking for a sailor style cap, Celine currently retail one for £590, but they are quite easy to make for much less money. So do let me know in the comments if you'd like a pattern and instructional video for that. There were so many visors in this film. I honestly think visors are underappreciated and I hope they become more popular soon. A visor is just a peak on a band without the crown. You can almost think of them as a baseball cap without the cap part. You can see how I made this one in my Wimbledon video, which I will link to in the top right. Visors can be so much fun and not only for a sporty look. One of my most favorite fashion photos is this, proving that visors can be fabulous evening wear as well as casual day wear. This is a Dior visor from 1952. I think this visor is made either in a velour felt or a velvet. It is trimmed with a contrast edge binding and a statement jewel at the center front. We don't see very many people wearing visors at the moment, so if you did want to try a visor, let's look at Barbie for some styling tips. Stereotypical Barbie's visor is a whole other moment of madness, but if I was ever tempted to go rollerblading, this is how I would dress. This is clearly a 90s inspired outfit. You would think that such brash neon acid colors would be too much altogether like that, but they actually temper each other out. The pattern on the leotard has this movement to it that looks like the moment just before you mix all the paint colors together to make a drab brown, but just before that, all the bright colors look glorious together. The neon yellow, which takes up the least space in the leotard pattern, is picked up in the hoop earrings. If we look at Barbie's visor in isolation with just her earrings, this makes a lot of visual sense. The hot pink on the visor edge binding would have been too much and more blue would look too muddy with so much hot pink around. So the neon yellow is the perfect standout contrast. In case you haven't noticed, I am British, so I don't feel qualified to have anything much to say about this American classic. I would love to find out more about these hat styles that I don't see much of here on the other side of the pond in the UK. So please feel free to educate me in the comments. What I can say, however, is that I absolutely love these matching looks on Barbie and Ken. Giant hat brims such as these need to be balanced out somewhere else in the silhouette. In these costumes, that is achieved in the flare and volume of the trousers. The whole look is very angular with the sculptural crowns and V-shaped necklines. To ground the neckline, a neck scarf is an absolute must for that stereotypical cowgirl look. From an American classic to a French one, the beret. A beret hat shape is classified as having a fitted base, which then bulges out at the crown. There is so much more to berets than you might think. Barbie wears a classic floppy beret for her car journey out of Barbie land, but this is also a beret, as is this, and also this. These are all what I call structured berets. I make these by blocking wool felt and I'll leave a link to where you can purchase these in the description box. And if you're interested in the process of blocking a hat, then I recommend you watch this video that I've linked to in the top right. 
I find structured berets especially great as they can be dressed up to be fancy and sophisticated when worn with a cape style coat, or they can be just purely practical on a long autumn walk with an anorak jacket. As for non-blocked berets, you can make these quite easily at home with just a sewing machine. There are so many cut pattern variations for these, an eight section crown or a tip and sideband, or how about this fancy one with pleats? If you are interested in sewing your own beret, I recommend this book, Hats on Heads by Mildred Anelzark. When in doubt, throw on a pillbox. At least, that's what looks like happened here at President Barbie's office. Pillboxes are great with pencil skirts and structured jackets. You can either go matchy-matchy like this Barbie in the pink, or for a softer, more playful look, try a monochromatic match. This deep turquoise pillbox is darker than the light turquoise trim on this Barbie's jacket. Here in the real world, pillbox hats can give you an air of authority which can bring out your confidence, as demonstrated by Jackie Kennedy, Princess Diana and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark. All of these remarkable women have chosen to wear pillboxes with pink suits to important occasions. I'd like to give an honourable mention to all the accessories featured in the film. We've seen kerchiefs, bows, bandeau headbands and all those gold lame crin things in the disco planned choreography scene. If you are out for a night on the town, adding a hair accessory is a great way to elevate your outfit. You can express your personality through a simple hair accessory, be that a flower, bow or headband. I hope you've enjoyed this trip through Barbie Land to discuss all these hat styles. Be sure to like and subscribe to not miss next week's Sewn Gingham Picture Hat video. You can find me on all the socials listed here and sign up to my newsletter all about hats right up here. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.